Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com and today let's paint a missile platform. If you remember from the previous video, we left off with the base shape finished. So the only thing we have left to do are the missiles, but as you can see, there's a lot of them. And if you're doing a traditional painting, this would be very annoying work because they all need to look the same. Now, because we're working in Photoshop, we don't need to paint each one. And that's the real cool takeaway here. I can paint a single missile with lots of detail, and then I can duplicate it a bunch of times. But there's different ways to approach that. One way would be I paint a single version with a lot of detail, and then just I could hold down Alt and drag while using the Move tool, and I'd make copies. And that would be fine, but the way I'm going to show you allows you to make a bunch of copies, but then if you want to change any of them, they will all update. So here I could change the color of the tip of this rocket, and then all of the clones would have the same color change. This is incredibly powerful. So let's take a step back and see how I set this up. First, it's important to note that I've given myself a nice sort of grid to follow. All these circles that I have in my line drawing are going to end up being covered up. They're really just there to show me where the missiles are supposed to go. And then I just start with a single missile, and I want to give it two major components. First, I'm going to paint the little ring that's going to sort of hold it in place. So I created a quick circle. I happen to use vector, but you could use whatever you wanted. Convert it to a raster layer, locked transparent pixels, which should be familiar by now, and then began painting on top of it. If you didn't want to be so precise, you could paint this however you wanted. To give the outline a nice little pop, I made a marquee selection, did edit stroke, and then just did a few pixel stroke to give it that nice sharp edge. And then with a few layers, I am gonna have my ring ready to go. And then as a separate object, I'm gonna start painting my missile. Now the missile has a very specific sort of mechanical shape. So for me, I just like to use the pen tool to get a good clean edge. You don't need to, it's really up to you, but I'm gonna use it this time. Then I convert it to be rasterized and I just start doing some basic rendering just to give myself a sense of it. Okay, so that's enough detail for now. I'm gonna take those two layers, the ring and the missile, and I'm gonna convert them as a unit to be a smart object. And once they're a smart object, it's now time to sort of arrange my grouping of missiles. So all this means is when I'm duplicating these, it just is easier if I start with the ones that are furthest away from me, and then as I Alt drag with the move tool and make copies, then I can just make use of the stacking order. They're gonna overlap properly. But once I've set them all up in the right places, now I get to have fun with smart objects. Here's where I can click on any one of them because they're all identical clones. I can click on any one of them, open up that second document and start to paint in all of my details. So here I can take as much time as I want on a single missile because anything I do is eventually gonna cascade down to all of its cousins. So this is like strategy. I've decided I'm gonna set up this smart object relationship, which means a little extra time up front, but then I'm not gonna to have to paint each missile. Awesome. Now, eventually I'll be finished with painting the single missile. I'll hit save and go back to my main document and it's gonna look a little too perfect. And all this means is I'm gonna to have to do a little painting over top to kind of integrate it back into the image. Generally, this means putting some special lighting information or shadows to make them look a little different from one another. But in the big picture, that's a lot easier than painting each individual missile. So if you want to paint like this, you're going to have to understand the basic Photoshop principles at work. The first of which is to know how to set up smart objects. And once you've got your smart objects set up, you need to know how to do basic painting techniques. So I'm using temp layers, I'm using multiply layers, and I'm using equal parts of both brush tool and eraser tool. So if any of these techniques are new to you, make sure to follow the links at the bottom of the post and you can learn all about them. And as always, thanks for coming to the site, guys.